although the construction of the various elements of the A300 was perfectly on track. Dark clouds were soon to appear in the European sky. Transporting the huge sections to the final assembly line in Toulouse was going to be far more complicated than at first thought. Se créer un autre problème, c'était des éléments trop gros pour transporter pareil. Donc, il ne nous restait rien d'autre que chercher un transport aérien. It was decided to use an aircraft to carry the aircraft sections. The rare bird in question already flew in the US. A Boeing used at the time to ferry rocket parts for NASA. Two would do the trick nicely, and the A300 parts would finally get to Toulouse. Fine, except that the two Super Guppies arrived in Europe a few months too late. Because the program timelines had to be met, the first parts of the A300 were conveyed by sea and then by road. The convoys certainly could not be missed. And to put it mildly, there were a few headaches. After a few months, as the assembly progressed, the A300 started to take shape. On the tarmac in Toulouse, the first tests could at last begin we were finally going to see what the aircraft was up to. The A300 was officially presented late September 1972 and immediately caught everyone's attention. Unless, of course, they'd also come to see the other plane. When it took off for the first time on October the 28th, 1972, it seemed like the hard part was over. The A300 well and truly existed, and that in itself was amazing. Normalement, on aurait dû attendre un jour. Bon, j'ai subi les, les pressions, la tension ambiante. Je ne peux pas dire de qui, mais il y avait une certaine tension ambiante qui a fait que j'ai décollé. C'est quand même quelque chose de voir un ensemble qui était un ensemble artificiel de papier et se transformer en objet volant. Et en plus, volant correctement, d'après les réactions de, de Fisch et Ziegler à l'arrivée. The pilots' reactions may well have had something to do with the weather, which that day had decided to put the A300 to the test. With all the gusto, it could muster. Il faut dire, ça restera dans l'histoire, que euh, le vent de travers maximum autorisé pour un avion, c'est le plus fort, fort vent enregistré qu'il a rencontré au cours de sa carrière. Sa carrière d'essai, si possible, mais même plus tard, on peut l'augmenter. Le plus vent, fort vent de travers jamais rencontré sur un 300, c'était le premier vol. 